<coughs> the trino meal, excuse me, by the trino meal. Yes. Huh? This is the last problem. So if you get, yes? Uh, you can do it by like, you can do the first example we did. I forget what it was, but let's say it's 3x <laughs> times x minus 1. Well, now you're multiplying a, an expression with only one term and an expression with two terms. So your box would have one, one term, and then two columns. So you can still do it that way, OK? Just depends on how many terms you have. That's how many rows and columns. So what's helpful about this is, you guys can see, look how many lines it looks like, right? I've got to multiply negative 1 times all of these. Then I've got to do 3x times all of these. Then I've got to do negative 2x squared times all of those. Then I've got to combine like terms. Where what we can do is if we organize this, notice I have three terms times three terms in each expression. So when I create my box, I'm just going to make sure I have three rows to represent one of them. And, I'm sorry, three columns and then three rows. Then I'll just take one and say this will be 2x squared minus 3x minus 1. And then this one will be x squared plus x plus 1. Now all I need to focus on, rather than trying to do all this stuff, I just find the area of each box. And every area of each of these boxes has a length of x squared. So x squared times negative 2x is negative 2x to the fourth. x squared times negative 3x is negative 3x cubed. Right? I'm adding the powers x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. Now I go to the next box. All of these boxes have a length of x. x times negative 2x is negative 2x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Then I go to the next box, the next row. These boxes all have a length of 1, or a width of 1, length of 1. Well, guess what? It's just going to 1 times 2, negative 2x squared is negative 2x squared negative 3x and negative 1. And again, as I mentioned, your common terms, as long as you, have, as long as you multiply, do you guys see how these are squared is the highest power, and then technically 1, and then the constant? Highest power, 1, and then the constant, the powers? As long as you have the powers in descending order, you're always going to have your like terms on a diagonal. So now, there's nothing that adds with negative 2x to the fourth, right? None of these other boxes. So negative 2x to the fourth. Then here, you can see I have two term, two areas that have x cubed. So I can combine them. Because remember, when you're multiplying, you only have to have the base being the same. But when you're adding and subtracting, you have to have the base and the power be exactly the same. So I can combine these. I just add the coefficients. So negative 3x squared or cubed plus negative 2x cubed is going to be a negative 5 x cubed. Here, that's going to give me a negative 6 x squared. And then here, these are all like terms. This gives me a negative 4x minus 1. And that's done. You don't have to do it my way. But I would tell you that when students take a test, 